Uh, it is great to be joined by this guy uh, once again. Uh, Lions great play-by-play -play announcer Dan Miller uh, joins us now, Fox 2 Sports Director as well. And again, you can watch us on the Fox Local app on your smart TV, your Roku, your Fire TV. If you have not downloaded that yet, very quick and easy and free, Fox Local on your smart TV. Dan, how you doing, buddy? What's up, boys? How you doing? Doing great. Good to see you, Doing Dan. great. Uh, fun to talk a little Lions football and uh, the draft 57 days away. Um, we were just having some fun with Mel Kuyper's mock draft, and we're like, in years past, we would obsess over this stuff. We don't even care anymore. <laughs> well, I think, it's, I think it's a balance of, of knowing you're not picking in the top 10, so it's kind of hard to narrow down what you're going to get. But I think what also goes into that, Ryan, is just your sense of trust in Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell that they're going to do the right thing when it comes to pick 29 or any of those four picks in the top 100 or something like that. I just think there's a there's a comfort now that you have. There's always excitement, intrigue, um, hope, things like that. But I think because he has exhibited an ability to identify talent, get the talent here, Campbell staff has exhibited an ability to develop that talent. It's kind of like bring it let's see what you do now but you know I, I still think it's going to be interesting I mean is he going to stay there is he going to move back we saw him trade so many times last year that you just have no clue Dan I said yesterday that I would quit this job if Brad Holmes if uh, Roger Goodell comes to the podium you've got 300,000 people in downtown <laughs> Detroit on Thursday night waiting for one pick and Roger Goodell comes to the podium and says, uh, we have a trade. The Detroit Lions have traded back. Yep. Um, I just, what role do you think that part of it plays <laughs> in yeah. this? I don't know. I, it's a great question because I thought the same thing. I thought, man, is there any, first of all, part of me says Brad Holmes could care less that the draft is in Detroit. He's building a football team. I don't think he does. If we've learned anything from him, anything to do anything other than try to make said team better. So if he feels like he can pick up a couple more assets and still get a group of guys that he wants a little bit later, uh, I think that's something he'd look at. I still think, guys, he's going to do what is best for the Detroit Lions. I don't think it's going to be something where he says, man, you know what, I could get uh, another two or a two next year or something like that if I trade out of the first round and say, nope, can't do it because there's – you know, 250,000 people down stretching from, you know, Campus Martius to Hart Plaza. So I, I just, my gut tells me he's still going to do what's best for this football team. But it, it is something that I've thought about. And I wonder if it's kind of rattled around in his brain a little bit about being on the clock and folks wait until 1130 at night to see what the pick is. And all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> see you tomorrow. Right. Exactly. Dan, is it going to be, in your opinion, is it going to be best player available or is it going to be a need? cornerback they need defensive line yeah. they need well i mean i think there's there's things that are going to happen between now and then mass i think number one you got free agency between now and then we do uh, there's still some of their own their own guys that that you know you may be able to re-sign or something along those lines that that may shape another position they need interior offensive line well what if all of a sudden they find a deal with jonah jackson and you know, they find a deal with Graham Glasgow and those guys are back here, then it's a little less of a priority. So, um, I, look, we can identify interior offensive line, defensive line, corner, seem to be the places that they absolutely need some help. But, I mean, Brad Holmes is Brad Holmes, man. If he sees a guy sitting there that he feels like is just a really good player that, that fits, I mean, throw out a name. What, what if Keon Coleman is sitting there at 29? I just I just said that. that that's it. I, I just said that ten minutes yeah, before I, you I'm came just on. Throwing out a name yeah. of a really really good football player that I think is going to be a big difference making wide receiver in this league, and it's a position where you can't say that they don't need help. We don't know what's going to happen with Josh Reynolds. We don't know if he's going to be back or not. Um, and, and that you got. Uh, you know, obviously, Amon Ra's going to lead the way. JMO really showed what he can do in a lot of different routes that we hadn't seen coming towards the end of the year. But there's always room to improve. So I guess I'm just throwing out a name. And it, don't just concentrate on him. But I'm just saying, if there is somebody there, I think after watching Brad Holmes operate, I don't know that much other than a quarterback, a kicker, a punter, 
uh, is going to surprise us at this point. I just don't. And that's the point that I was trying to make too, Dan. Like, who is the player, do you think? You know, I think when uh, he took uh, Jameer Gibbs or Jack Campbell, I mean, people were like, what are you doing? Who would be that player this year? And I, and I, almost, and I think it would be less this year because of the success he's had in the draft, obviously. But Keon Coleman is that guy. I mean, uh, in I wouldn't even if doubt. He lasts. I wouldn't even doubt. Maybe even uh, Mel Kuyper's got Keon Coleman going twenty six today. Could you see a trade up to go get that oh, player? I, I don't, you know, you I know don't what wanna, I mean. I don't want to get to be that guy who that, that I'm saying they're they're concentrating I, on him. I understand. I'm just trying to throw out an example of yeah. somebody that might fall, and all of a sudden Brad Holmes just says, you know, either Keon Coleman or player X is too good to pass up even if it looks to other people like we might have bigger needs somewhere else. That's my point. A couple of years ago, you know, people were all over him because he didn't draft a wide receiver. Went through two days without drafting a wide receiver. And then in the third day, he got some dude named St. Brown who turned out to be pretty good. So he's going to do things on his own time. I think that's what we've learned about him. And if somebody falls that he feels is just that guy or too good to pass up or you know, at the top of their board, because let's not forget, you know, when they talk about Gibbs, they talk about, you know, he wasn't the 12th best player for us. He wasn't the 10th, but I mean, he was in their top six. So his ranking will ultimately be what dictates where he goes with probably a sprinkle of need in there as well, because Gibbs was a need and Campbell ultimately they feel like is going to be that guy and Branch, you know, I don't know if they necessarily thought they were going to need him that quickly, but Laporta was a guy that they needed. So it's a mix with Brad Holmes and trying to sit here and predict what he's going to do is really difficult. But the part that's not difficult is the trust that you have in him because of what he's done so far. Hey, Dan, you mentioned Jonah Jackson a moment ago. Um, you know, I think one of the thoughts and I, maybe it's wrong, but at the end of the season, you figured the Lions were going to have enough money to, to spend on Jonah Jackson or Graham Glasgow. Does the increase in salary in the salary cap, maybe make it so both guys would have an opportunity to come back? Or do you think one of those guys is gone and they will focus on, uh, you know, perhaps the one that they like better? I, I just think, number one, remember that cap went up for everybody. So everybody's got a little more flexibility now. And certainly the Lions do have some flexibility. And, he's, you know, Brad Holmes said yesterday at the Combine that they had already kind of worked that into their plans. And, and it's part of what they're trying to do right now. Um, and, you know, you kind of add that into, okay, where are our projections and, and how does this figure into it? My problem with Jonah has always been this. It's nothing to do with the player. It's the ultimate question of can you afford long term when you put everything up on the board and say where we're going to be in 24, 25, and 26, can you afford to pay four offensive linemen, you know, at or near top of the market pricing? I mean, Taylor, Deck, Taylor Decker's making money. Frank Ragnow's making money. Panay is going to get paid. I mean, with a capital P-A-I-Y-D, he's going to get paid. So, um, and then Jonah, I, I don't think is, is going to have a huge discount. You know, he may not be the top of the guard tier, but he's going to be up there making good money. So I just, I just don't know if they can afford to do that. I've said it before, I hope they can. He's one of my guys. Uh, he's a great guy. He's a great locker room guy. He's a heck of a player. He's part of that group that's become the face of the team. I'd hate to see him leave, but I think there's sometimes uh, these things become reality based in what you can and can't do. And it becomes very difficult when you got to pay St. Brown, you got to pay Aleem, you got to pay Goff, you're going to have to pay Panay, and all these bills start coming due. Sometimes you just have to take a step back at some positions or at least try to fill that position in a different way. Dan, last year they said there was about 14 players on the board that had first round uh, grades. This year, I'm hearing there's over 30. Have you heard that? And how does that bode for the Lions? I think what I heard Holmes say was they weren't quite there yet. They're getting more of a feel for that um, this week as they talk to guys and, and get, to, get to know a little bit more about their personality. So I, I don't know what that number is. If that number's come out, I didn't see it. So I'm not sure how many An AFC scout said that. An AFC scout yeah. said that, not the Lions. Yeah. yeah, and not everybody's board looks the yeah. same. I mean, obviously, they, they may look at different things than, you know, whoever that AFC scout is. So, and, you know, half the time, anything you hear from people this time of year, they're lying anyway. 
Right. So it's it's I, I don't know what their feel is. But look, I think the way he feels and he talked about it yesterday was with with those four picks in the top hundred and picking it 29th. You know, he feels like he's got some room to move around and some maneuverability and and some options. And, you know, like I said, the, they do have some money to, to go out in free agency. And I'm going to be interested to see how they do that. Are they going to, you know, stick to kind of the medium priced free agents like they did last year? You know, top of the market right near the top of the market when it came to uh, Montgomery. Um, and I thought a, a, a decent price of 33 million on Cam Sutton. Um, but, you know, not paying the 75, 80 million that, you know, some of the corners have been getting over the past couple of years and not diving into the safety market for, you know, seven, again, 75, 80 million, having a one year contract for CJ. Uh, does he come back? What's the situation there? That's something to look at. Um, it feels like the dynamic has changed with Branch taking the nickel position, with Melifonwu stepping up at one safety spot and Kirby having the other one, that maybe the need that they thought they had for CJ isn't there anymore, but you can always keep good football players. And if that's one that they feel that they, they want to bring back, you can certainly see the case to make to do that. So I just think there's, there's so much they have to look at. Emmanuel Mosley you know, basically coming off two years worth of knee injuries. Is that somebody that you might be able to get at or near the veteran minimum uh, to see if he can be the guy you thought he was going to be when you brought him back, when you brought him in this year, only lasted for a couple plays. So then you start looking outside, but that cornerback room needs an influx of talent, guys. It, I think we saw this past year, they ran through a bunch of different guys. Nobody was re able really to lock down that second cornerback position. And I know they want to take some of the pressure off Cam Sutton out there and try to add some guys to that room. But when you hear Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell speak about these free agents, Dan, it just sounds like they just want to sign their own. They're almost – they're telling us that they're afraid to bring anybody in here. Like, if they don't know them since they were young little boys in high school, they're not bringing a guy in here. And I think that's – I think Jeez, that's cheating him. Mass. I do. That's a little rough. He's so, isn't it? I'm sorry. He's so mad, that's Dan. He's, that's he's what so they mad. Say. He's still yeah, mad about it. a kicker last year. Hey, Mass, did you did you uh, <laughs> did anybody introduce you to David Montgomery last year? He was a free agent from the Chicago Bears. Ended up being pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Did he you ever was. catch a glimpse of him? Do yeah. You know who uh, he is, so, Mass? I mean, yeah. no. I know. Look, I think what they're trying to do sometimes when they stand up there is to say to people, their guiding principle is that they're going to draft and develop. And I think so far it's worked wonderfully for them. Uh, they, they did, Maz may not have seen it, they got to the NFC Championship game this year without I got that. I got that. Million He's upset. <laughs> so, but look, I think also they did spend 18 on Montgomery and 33 on Sutton. And I know Sutton had his problems at the end of the year. So, I, I, but, but let's understand, they did sign him. And that secondary didn't look anything like they thought it was going to look. They thought they'd have CJ for a whole year. They thought Mosley would be back and he would be playing. So there were things that, that were kind of beyond their control. But I think when it's right, they will spend. And maybe they surprise us. and They do go out there and kick up some big bucks on somebody. But it's also hard to argue with the results that they've gotten in three years to go from 313-1 and one to 9-8 and eight to 12-5 and five and in the NFC Championship game. So I think they've earned some equity with the decision-making. Yes, of course. I, I, would, I would care less about what they say okay. and concentrate more on what they do. Because again, I just think they're, I feel like sometimes they're just trying to temper expectations that if they're not the first team out there spending 90 or a hundred million dollars on somebody, they're still working to figure things out. I'd be shocked if there weren't a couple mid priced free agents that they bring in this year at some positions of need, be it a veteran guard, veteran corner. I, I'd be shocked if there's not, you know, a veteran corner somewhere in there that's played in this league and, and, proven that he can contribute to a team. So, look, I still just think they're going to do work. It just might not be the top end of the free agent market. Maybe maybe it will be, but um, I just – it's it's not been their M.O. so far. Nope. Well, as long as Brad Holmes gets it right in Maz's eyes, I think we'll all be good. <laughs> hey. I'm telling you, but those eyes – those eyes are squinting mad right now. I can tell. It's just like, uh, you know, mad. You, you, hear, in the corner. you hear a name like Lazarius Sneed. You know, we're not getting him. We're you just, don't know that. We're not getting him because they don't know him since he was in college. Oh, stop it. Stop I'm stop sorry. It, why, why do you even? That That's so silly for you to go there. I mean, that, that's that's. Get him, Dan. Mad. Come on, man. Look that's what the they said. That they have brought in. <laughs> Did they, they not they, say that? 
No, they did not they did say, say that. They are more comfortable <laughs> with guys that they have developed and re signed them because they know exactly what they're getting versus somebody from another team that you may pay big bucks for and you really don't know them as well. I think that's fair to say, Maz, when you look at the hit rate on free agency around the NFL, that oftentimes you'll see teams sign a guy or see teams go on these big spending sprees, and two years later they're, t they're tearing that team down because they got cap problems and it didn't work out like they thought it would. But I, I think you're going to extremes and you're also, you know, extrapolating that statement out a little bit uh, when you're saying that they won't do it because they haven't known it since whatever grade you talked about. I mean, I think they're just making a point. And I think so far that point that they have lived by has served them pretty well. But I, I think if you completely discount what they have done to, I to help this team by going I outside, I think that's that's I'm not, not a dummy, it. Dan. I'm just talking and I'm just talking no, as but a we fan. Have I'm maybe talking as a fan just, here, man. I'm just talking about what I hear there, and what man. I see. We perhaps have embarrassed ourselves enough. Uh, <laughs> all right, Dan, it, it's stick. First of all, uh, great season. It was great randomly texting you after games about your calls and stuff like that. Uh, somebody gave me his number, and I'm sorry that you just get random texts from me, Dan. Um, but I wanted to say, I, didn't. I, didn't. I, I wanted to know, did you watch that uh, mini video that the Lions put out uh, last night about their season? I did not see that yet. No, I did not. Yeah, it's I on I saw YouTube. Somebody yeah. Okay. I, well, I they use see it. they use a ton text. of your sound bites and they use a ton of your calls and stuff like that. And I mean, I I was telling Maz and the guys here like during the season I didn't get emotional. I didn't cry like a lot of guys in the studio. But watching that this morning, I got the goosebumps. Started to tear up a little bit. Like these guys actually did what they did. Have you now had time to like kind of go back and realize what you were able to call and be a part of this season? I think you do. Yeah, I think you do in particular when you go through 18 years before that where you don't get that kind of excitement. And, you know, stick the best part for me and, and Ryan and I have talked about this before is just seeing the fans, man. It's just to, for them to get the payback for all of the love they've given this team, frankly, the, the commitment and financially they've, they've given to this team, um, emotions just and, and taking so many gut punches for them to finally Phil Ford Field for a playoff game. Give us that kind of atmosphere that we all saw uh, against the Rams and the and the Bucks game. That was what made it all just so special. I mean, being in and around Detroit before and after those games and just feeling the electricity, even during the week leading up to the games was unbelievable. Whether you were stopping at a gas station or to get food or whatever it was, man, everybody was just like community. Everybody was just feeling it. It was just like, great. So. Yeah, I mean, somebody asked me yesterday, they said, what's, do you have a number one game you've ever called? I said, it's the Rams game, without a doubt. I mean, that was incredible. To see them come through, to see Jared beat his former team, to beat Stafford, to knock them out, to win a playoff game, finally, to win one at Ford Field, finally, where you hadn't even, even had one. Yeah, man, I mean, it was just, it was awesome to just check boxes, division title, boom, home playoff game, boom. Playoff victory, boom. Getting back to the NFC Championship game, boom. And now you're looking to check bigger boxes going forward. But the work they did this year was really important because it keeps them on course. And now you're trying to go, you were trying to go from bad to good. Now you've gone from good to really good. Now you're trying to go from really good to great or however you want to put it. And it's just about taking that next step. Dan Miller, we appreciate your time, buddy. Tell uh, sports producer extraordinaire Greg Canner we said hello if he's uh, right next to you in the office. He is right over there. Armani says hello. Matt Baskersian's over oh, there. Oh, Matt Baskersian over, over there. there. Matty V. Matt over there. Everybody's uh, here. So, Matt yeah. Trump, but we call him Matt Baskersian. Oh, Woody's oh, over here. <laughs> oh, Woody's man, here, the too. whole gang. Woodman. All right. Hammer's off so, today. Yeah, we got a full house in here. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's listening to Maz going, what is that guy's doing, man? <laughs> hey, hey I, I speak the truth. <laughs> I speak the truth. You speak your truth. So two different things. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. We'll see you later, bud. We'll see you next uh, week, Dan. Again, download the Fox local <laughs> app uh, on your smart TV if you have not done that so far. That is funny AF right there. All right, we're going to take a break.